all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so continuing with our discussion of inflammation yesterday we looked at the first lecture of it the point of this whole discussion is to understand chronic inflammation so for understanding acute inflammation which when disrupted could become chronic as well so let's start our second talk i think this is one of the most important talk overall in um, medicine and that is phagocytosis phagocytosis is the process by which phagocytic cell the cells that eat or drink pinocytic or phagocytic for example macrophages dendritic cells neutrophils even b cells are phagocytic phagocytic cells simply mean they can eat up things from their environment and then try to destroy them i said try to destroy them because normally their function is to destroy them but sometimes they cannot so let's start so first of all this is drbean.com and isn't this fun that right in front of us are the mast cells with their activation so anyways within the description of this video there is a link to drbean.com videos 800 to 1000 videos there and the price you will be amazed at the price that's a one time price for access to all of the videos now let's go back here this is the discussion continuing from yesterday so imagine now we have a pathogen this is a pathogen that is present in a tissue and here is a cell it may be an a neutrophil or a dendritic cell or a macrophage a phagocytic cell this cell has a job now and that is to pick up this pathogen first of all sense it we did that discussion yesterday it has to sense it and realize that there is a pathogen a microbe something bad is here then it has to now today we'll read or study that it has to now pick up this pathogen eat it up and destroy it that is a process phagocytosis so ingestion and killing of microbes microbes mean microscopic tiny pathogens by activated phagocytes so here this is very important to say activated phagocytes the reason for that is these cells mast cells or macrophages or dendritic cells are normally in a resting state in their resting state they are not actively eating up the pathogens they are just sensing the environment in the resting state they are also not releasing inflammatory markers and not causing inflammation also in the resting state even if they pick up things from the environment to taste them to understand them that is a slow process once these cells are activated they would become very rapid in picking up things from the environment and eating them up so please remember activated phagocyte is different from a resting phagocyte and sometimes in the chronic infection inflammations the phagocytes are activated majority of the time and they are causing problems so the cells that we're talking about are neutrophils and macrophages this process of phagocytosis that is picking up a pathogen and eating and destroying it this is an energy dependent process it needs atp atp means that the person should have been eating food plus breathing oxygen these two components will then help make atp that is why if somebody has infection and they're not eating well then their capability to fight the infection becomes less because their cells are not working correctly at the same time if somebody has let's say a disrupted inflammatory process a dysregulation of the immune system and they are fasting for example then they are not providing enough energy to the cells to function correctly and that also reduces the cells functionality giving them a break and when they start eating again they provide energy to the cells the cells start going berserk once more now a phagocyte so here is a phagocyte a phagocyte can sense the pathogens we discussed that yesterday through toll like receptors correct through the pamp receptors and damp receptors however when the phagocyte wants to eat a pathogen then for the eating process it has to pick up the pathogen that is usually opsonized opsonized means 
something, some protein, some molecule attached to the pathogen to make it easy for the phagocyte to eat it. I call it coating the pathogen with some candies so that the macrophages can pick up and look at those candies and then pick it up, the pathogen with the candies and eat it up. What does that mean? Let's start from here. Here we have a pathogen. Let's say this is a SARS-CoV-2 or some other virus or bacteria. And this blue part is an antibody against this pathogen. So that antibody has bound to this pathogen. And now this part of the antibody is called constant region. So antibodies have a structure like this, Y-like structure, and they have a variable region where they bind with the pathogen, and then they have a constant region. This constant region here can bind with the receptors on the phagocyte. These receptors that can bind with the FC region are called IgG, aminoglobulin G, that is the antibody class, FC fraction constant receptor. So this is what is used by many folks to say we will have antibody dependent enhancement. This is what it is that here the antibodies with the pathogen attaches with the FC gamma receptors and then this whole complex will be internalized in the phagocyte. This process will be called phagocytosis. Another way for the phagocytosis is when there is a pathogen and that pathogen is opsonized or coated by complement 3B. Complement is another um, protein. When the acute infection occurs, remember yesterday we talked about tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 and other uh, cytokines. They go to the liver and influence the liver cells to produce proteins to help with the acute inflammation. Part of that help is that liver produces complement proteins. Complement proteins are part of the innate arm of the immune system. These proteins have many types, many complement 2 and 3 and 4 and so on. There is one complement protein number 3. And that 3 protein is broken up into two pieces, C3A, we call it, complement 3A piece and complement 3B piece. The C3B, usually B means binding and A means action. So the B piece will connect with the pathogen and opsonize it. Opsonize means makes it yummy to be eaten up, makes it ready to be eaten up, acts as a handle on the pathogen with which the macrophages or phagocytes can eat or grab the pathogen. So here, this black little piece is the C3B. And the phagocyte has a receptor on it for binding with the C3B. But of course, when it will bind with the C3B here, the C3B in turn is bound with the, with the pathogen. So this whole complex would then get into the phagocyte. And that is also phagocytosis through complement receptor. A third way of phagocytosis is through lectin receptor. That is also a complement activation pathway. Here, these are lectin molecules that are opsonizing, that means decorating, that are attached to the pathogen. Our liver made them and released them, and they are now attached to the pathogen. Then the phagocytes have receptors for them as well, with which they'll bind them, and then they, would, they will bring them in. So this is one set of mechanisms through which a pathogen, offending agent, some bad substance, will be picked up by a phagocyte and internalized it. This whole thing needs energy. Now I'm skipping the process of how the membrane will invaginate and then zip around the pathogen to make a small sphere or vesicle. Let's just go to the second part of the discussion where this phagocyte, this is a phagocyte now, it has eaten up this pathogen has internalized it so that wherever the pathogen was attached, it, the cell membrane over there got invaginated, the pathogen was trapped into that little vesicle and that vesicle closed around it and now we have a sphere in which the pathogen is stuck. Now this will also, this whole process will 
also activate the phagocyte. And once again, I said yesterday that we should keep asking, so what? An activated phagocyte, if it is taking care of the damaged cells or the pathogens, it's a good thing. If it is activated without much regard to the need for activation, if it is unnecessarily activated, then it would create chronic inflammation or more inflammation that may be chronic or transient. Now, how does a phagocyte become activated? The PRR signals, pattern recognition receptors. Remember that is DAMP receptors or PAMP receptors or TLR receptors. These are also called pattern recognition receptors. When these receptors are attached to a pathogen, that would activate the macrophage or neutrophil or dendritic cell. So one way to activate phagocyte is when that phagocyte's pattern recognition receptors are connecting with pathogens. Then the second way is when opsonin receptors are activated. Opsonin receptors are there, here. C3B receptor, lectin receptor, even these uh, FC gamma receptor for the antibodies. Another way is when the cytokine receptors are stimulated. Why cytokine receptors? Remember, wherever the fight is happening, wherever the, the war, war is going on and there are pathogens and damaged cells and the macrophages are becoming activated, the activated macrophages will release the cytokines. We discussed that yesterday. Those cytokines will then go and bind to the receptors on the nearby immune system cells. And they would then cause activation of those cells. So, of course, cytokine receptors, and when these are stimulated, will activate the uh, phagocytes as well. Then, interferon gamma cytokine and CD40 are very important. So, once again, let's say you're trying to manage a patient's situation. The inflammation has run away. It is out of control. You want to bring it in control. You could give interferon gamma blockers or CD40 blockers because these also activate the phagocytes. You may not be able to remove the pathogen, which is irritating the phagocyte and activating it or connecting with its pattern recognition receptors or connecting with, or the pathogen is, uh, sorry, phagocyte is now connecting with the opsonin receptor because the pathogen is present, opsonized. However, you could modulate the cytokines. So now that the pathogen is inside the phagocyte, phagocyte has tiny vesicles. Vesicles are small ball-like structures within the cell. These ball-like structures contain various kinds of enzymes or functional machineries. This vesicle here is called lysosome. A lysosome is a small sphere which contains various kind of enzymes that will help make reactive oxygen species or nitrogen species or uh, it has proteolytic enzymes that would help break down the pathogen. But remember this lysosome are present separately. So the phagocytes function if I asked you tomorrow, if I gave you a test and said, tell me how would the phagocyte work? The, here is a test. First of all, the phagocyte will pick up the pathogen. And that process will be called phagocytosis. And the result will be entrapment of the bacteria or virus or fungus or pollen, whatever it is, into a phagosome, a small, small vesicle in, that is now inside the pathogen, sorry, the cell. Then the second step is that lysosomes that are already present in the cell are brought near the phagosome. That itself is a dance to pull. Now this we are inside the cell. Imagine you're sitting in a microscopic helicopter and you have landed in the cell and now you're looking around. So these lysosomes are actually present in the cell and we kind of pull them and fuse them the phagosomes. If you see here, 
here, this is the lysosome. This was the phagosome. Now they have fused together and the contents of the lysosome have now spilled into the phagosome. I always, when I'm uh, talking with the nursing or medical students, I always say that this is like a hot tub filled with acids that is now spilled on the bacteria or the virus or the fungus. Now, this is the important part here. This lysosome, what does it have that would help break the bacteria? So let's use bacteria. I don't want to say bacteria, virus, fungus, pollen. So let's just keep saying bacteria, but assuming all those things. What will happen is the following. Number one, the phagocyte has or will make reactive oxygen species or ROS. And you know that ROS are an important contributor to inflammation and to chronic inflammation. And ROS management or control is an important way to control inflammation. This is why you hear people saying vitamin C's and D's and other vitamins or antioxidants are necessary. Now here, in these activated cells, we actually intentionally make ROS. And this mainly happens in the neutrophils. Macrophages can make ROS as well, but macrophages mostly make nitric oxide. So macrophage and neutrophil, they both can pick up the pathogens and kill them. However, their mechanisms are slightly different. So let's look at the neutrophils mechanism. Very interesting mechanism. So let me give you a summary of both of those mechanisms here in one cell. So what happens is in the cytosol, cytosol means cells, cytoplasm, outside of the nucleus, inside of the cell membrane. In the cytosol of the cell, there is an enzyme called INOS or inducible nitric oxide synthase, an enzyme present in the cell. This enzyme can pick up arginine and convert that to citrulline. In that process, nitric oxide gas is produced. This nitric oxide gas is reactive and will help kill the pathogen. This happens in macrophages. In the neutrophils and to some extent in macrophages, there is another enzyme present called oxidase or macrophagocyte oxidase. This enzyme is present in the membrane of the lysosome. The inos was present in the cytosol. And you might actually look at this all and say, well, this is just, you know, simple things and maybe don't even need them. But I can tell you a few days ago, I was in a Zoom call where multiple doctors, some immunologists, some infectious disease doctors, some ICU um, uh, doctors, they were talking about vaccine injury and long COVID. And one of the doctors, specialist, was very proudly explaining this mechanism. And others, other doctors were saying, thank you very much that you brought it up. Of course, they had read it in the past, but they were all getting fascinated and thinking that how to manipulate these levers. So today you have the privilege to look at those levers. And again, this is not my uh, information. This is what I have read from the books as well, but it is exciting. So here we have inducible nitric oxide synthase. That is an enzyme, and I'll discuss that a little more. That helps make nitri nitric oxide. Then we also have in the membrane of lysosome, we have phagocyte oxidase. Phagocyte oxidase helps make reactive oxygen species, and I'll explain how. Both of these things, nitric oxides and reactive oxygen species, in turn attack the pathogen and they kill it. Usually, in a healthy, normal way, they kill it. If they are unable to kill it, now this thing is going to become frustrated and it would just keep releasing inflammatory molecules everywhere. This 
frustrated cell can become the precursor to start chronic inflammation. Now, the question, how are these enzymes activated? Because once again, please remember, we don't want the cell to be active all the time. Once the cell becomes active, then we want the machinery to be active. This is like you go in, let's say you have a vacation house. You don't want the house to be operating all the time. So normally it is closed down, it is in a resting state. Then one day you decide to go for a vacation, you go and open your house. So that is the activation of the cell. Then when you go in, you want various machines and various lights and things to start operating and you start switching on individual things. That is the process here as well. Once we activate the cell, then we need to activate the enzymes that are necessary for an active cell to do its function. What a beautiful set of mechanisms life is. So the activated signals, activation signals for this enzyme they are also interferon gamma and the tall like receptors. So the tall like receptors on this cell, when that becomes active, that also activates the oxidase. Similarly, when interferon gamma as a cytokine comes and attaches to the receptor, that also activates the oxidase. Do you see how imp important and interesting interferon gamma is? And please remember from the previous uh, immunology discussions, interferon gamma is T helper one pathway. Right? So that pathway will cause the T helper cells in that pathway towards the cytotoxic T cells. They will produce a lot of interferon gamma. That interferon gamma would in turn activate the innate arm as we are seeing here. So how does that interferon gamma activate the cell? Number one, it activates the cell overall. It turns the lights on. And number two, it activates the enzymes in it. So if you modulate interferon gamma, you can see how you can try to control inflammation. Okay, so continuing. So now we're going to go over the processes. These are the last two topics now. Both the processes. How does respiratory burst or reactive oxygen species are made? And how is nitric oxide is made? And the third one is proteolysis. So let's talk about them. First of all, superoxide or reactive oxygen species making of that. Now we know that reactive oxygen species can also be made by electron transport change chain in mitochondria when the mitochondria are using energy and oxygen to make ATP. In that process, by energy I meant nutrients. In that process, when the electron transport chain runs, there can be production of reactive oxygen species. Normally, that process keeps the ROS in check, and we have within the cell enzymes that destroy ROS, but those ROS can become runaway and cause damage. Here, reactive oxygen species are made for a different reason. We are making them here as the poison for the bacteria or the virus or the fungus or pollen or something that we want to break. So here, First of all, let's go back to this one. We have the phagocyte oxidase. That enzyme picked up oxygen and radicalized it, made it charged. Very, very interesting thing. So once that oxygen is charged, we call it superoxide. So let's say there are superoxides. Then there is another enzyme cause called superoxide dismutase. And something that will be interesting to you, this dismutase needs copper and zinc to function. So incorrect amounts of copper or zinc will incorrectly take the inflammation in suppressed state or overactive state. So superoxide dismutase is an enzyme. This is all happening within the phagocyte. This superoxide dismutase will take the radical oxygen created and it would then combine it with more um, enzymes, or sorry, chemical molecules, and it would make hydrogen plus H2O2 plus water. This H2O2, in turn, is used by another enzyme called myeloperoxidase. Myeloperoxidase takes this H2O2, 
and convert it into HOCl. Now this could actually be chloride connecting here or bromide connecting here or iodide connecting here. There can be various kind of um, ions connecting here. So here I have used chloride. So we've got an HOCl. This HOCl or bleach is then used to kill the pathogen. I thought this was a real cute. It looks like an ant that is dead. But anyways, this is a bacteria that is dead. This process is happening here. Oxidase made the reactive oxygen species, then myeloperoxidase would help make the oxygen species into HOCl with the help of zinc, copper, that is superoxide dismutase, then myeloperoxidase, then chloride, all of that would then make HOCl. HOCl is going to attack this bacteria and kill it. That primarily happens in neutrophils to an extent in macrophages as well. So I hope this part is clear. Zinc is needed, or copper is needed, chloride is needed, of course, water and oxygen. This process is called respiratory burst. Neutrophils do that. In some people, respiratory burst does not work in their neutrophils and they develop chronic granulomatous disease. That is, they're not able to actually kill the pathogens. So pathogens arrive in their neutrophils. Neutrophils try to do the respiratory burst and burn those pathogens. Neutrophils cannot produce the respiratory burst because they do not have oxidase in them. The result is that pathogen just sits there. That causes chronic inflammation and granulomas are formed. Granulomas are big cells that are trying to now gather around the pathogen to kill it or to contain it. So that is one process. Second process, nitric oxide. I remember this one because this was being discussed in that discussion a few days ago, where one of the specialists was telling others that, hey guys, do you not remember that there is inducible synthase and that makes the nitric oxide and then nitric oxide helps kill the pathogen or nit nitric oxide? This NO has many functions. It would act on the vascular smooth cells. It would cause a lot of other activities as well. ACE2, sorry, ACE2 activation also dis uh, dysregulates nitric oxide. COVID spike protein does that too. So there is a lot of connectivity of this mechanism to the SARS-CoV-2. So here we have inducible nitric oxide synthase, or it is called inose. Inose takes arginine and converts it into citrulline. In that process, it makes nitric oxide gas. This nitric oxide gas gets into the phagolysosome, the one that we saw above. And then remember, on one side, there is oxidase making H2O2. So H2O2 and nitric oxide, they combine to make peroxynitrate. This peroxynitrate radical attacks the pathogen and destroys it. Sometimes the, if the pathogens are not being attacked correctly or they're not present, but our system just keeps making these things, then that attack would be directed at our tissues. Now remember, this inducible synthase, inose, is present in the cytosol of the cell and usually in the resting macrophages, it is not active. Enzyme. And when there is toll-like receptors and the other signals are present, then this enzyme becomes induced and active. This is the second mechanism with which we try to kill the pathogen. This is also the mechanism that can hurt us in inflammation regardless of the pathogen. This is also a mechanism that is present in chronic, some chronic inflammations. Last topic for today, my most beautiful diagram for the day. This is the proteolytic enzymes. I laugh when I look at his eyes. He looks so angry, but he, he looks funny at the same time. So uh, proteolytic enzymes. These are, as the name is saying, proteolytic. Proteo means protein, lytic means breaking. Enzyme means small machineries in the cell. So protein breaking machineries. Proteolytic enzymes are also present in lysosomes. Their function 
is to break down proteins. And the more common known proteolytic enzymes, elastases, for example, serine proteases, and if you wrote serine protease supplements, you would see that there are things uh, related to this. So serine proteases and cathepsin G proteases are present, which are more common. There are many other. And their function, these enzymes function, is to pick up a protein and break at these amino acid areas. The end result is they would break down the pathogen. This is like putting the pathogen on a chopping block and just chopping it. That is the proteases. Proteases, majority of them are present in the activated neutrophils and macrophages. In the resting states, they are inactive, the proteases. So this is the um, discussion for today. This is the second part. One of the intriguing and complex mechanism, I have actually removed some steps of it, mechanism that we all study in medicine and then we use in the advanced practices as well. And so this is phagocytosis or killing of a pathogen. This could actually be used to destroy the debris that we pick up from the damaged tissue. That is a discussion. Please do me a favor. We will continue our discussion now tomorrow. Uh, please do me a favor, like, subscribe and share. There is a link in the description which offers you access to Dr. Bean premium account. Th these kind of videos or my videos. And then there are another, I believe, 11 teachers who are practicing doctors in the US and their lectures. About 1,000 lectures. And the price, if you click on that link, you'll see, I say it very often, many people say, is that a monthly price? That's actually a one-time price. And every new lecture that we do, for example, this lecture within a couple of weeks will end up on Dr. Bean as well. So uh, take advantage of that. And then there are other links as well in the description. If you would like to support this work, you can buy me a coffee or you can become part of patrons or you can become a Substack member or you can use PayPal to support this work. Thank you very much. And I would see you tomorrow. So today I have done three lectures, one for FLCCC, one on monkeypox, third one is this one. I'm going to skip the chit chat if you are okay with that and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye for now.